Future Proof is sponsored by Learn Smart Academy, online revision courses for GCSE and A level. All your revision in one place, organised for you, interactive and game changing. Hello and thank you for joining me Sarah Hopwood. I'm delighted that you're able to um, continue with me as I start this second program looking at how to beat the gremlins and in the first program I was saying the gremlin is like that voice that sits on your shoulder constantly nibbling away at you telling you that you're not good enough and you know I'm saying that um, the conversations that we listen to most that we actually believe more than any other conversations are those that we have with ourselves and it is a conversation it, it is two ways so you'll often um, repeat a thought and, and I think it's something ridiculous like 90 odd percent of your thoughts the conversation that you have with yourself today is exactly the same as the conversation you had with yourself yesterday so be very careful about it and it is a conversation because we're listening and telling ourselves something and nine times out of ten the, the response is we're nodding we're um, filtering all supporting evidence to back up this niggle that it's it is the truth and then we love saying yes see told you so I was right and um, so to beat those gremlins is to try and stop too much of that chatter and a way of doing that is looking outward it's around serving and helping other people it's around getting our minds off of ourselves which is really important and getting out of the way of ourselves but I also want to put in this little um, caveat if if I may and that is there is this great saying that you can't you can't help other people until you've sorted yourself out and I don't agree with that as a whole statement and I certainly think COVID um, has supported that. If every single frontline worker said I can't help anybody till I'm all right then um, we wouldn't be thanking them the way that we are now and before now when I've argued it before COVID when I've said I don't believe this to be a true statement I've then said to people go and ask the soldiers on the front line you know um, so yes they need the right equipment we've got you know so I'm not arguing that, that that we sabotage people but I just worry that if we think we all have to be 100% okay before we can help other people I think we are generating a very selfish self-centered way of thinking so so I suppose the word that comes to mind is balance and when I was in severe crisis myself I had to help and sort myself out because I was completely totally and utterly broken so I think there is a place for it and certainly that's where I felt it was a place I had to go and sort myself out because I wasn't in any place at all where I could help anybody else but I would also say have I always made sure that I'm all right before I help other people no you know, I have helped people when I have been feeling really down and out and, and, and what have you. So I think the bal the word balance is what comes to mind. So on in the last program, I was looking at what we could learn from the sports world. And um, there are many people uh, who uh, have uh, come onto the speaking circuit, who have learnt through their own lessons, who have conquered their own gremlins, and they are now getting out there to share how they've done it. And um, Gareth is one of them he was an incredible speaker so if you ever get a chance to hear him speak then I suggest you do go and see him and I've also uh, been great great friends with Rona Kant who sailed around the world backwards and she was actually trained by Che Blythe and there's a great story in her I know it's a phrase this, so I don't think I'm swearing her bloody mindedness she was um, she had she was like a dog with a bone uh, wanting to be on this particular boat and you know I have filmed with her before where she's told her story as to how she had so many no's and so many people saying kind of she couldn't and she had kids and there was all sorts of social norms and other things that were factoring into saying a no to her 
and she's one of those who was excited every time she got a no she then said right every no is getting me closer to my yes and that's the inspiration I'd love to kind of leave here if you like is for every no you get just imagine that is taking you closer to your yes so don't give up remain resilient be focused picture smell and taste and remind yourself what it is you're going for and then the litmus test is double checking why and if you keep that focus in a way the gremlins kind of start to leave you alone as long as you're not tied up with um just be careful of habits and be careful of addictions because whatever is going on, if something has a power over you, then it usually wins or can win if we don't do something about it. Whatever we resist persists, so always remember that. Andy Wyatt was a Red Arrow pilot who um, I interviewed. I interviewed um, two others, Sir, uh, Sir Christopher Coville and Brian Hoskins as well. Fantastic um, people to talk to, to ask them about how emotionally intelligent thinking has helped them with their gremlins. You know, those Red Arrow, all of them Red Arrow pilots, you know, how much have they had to learn that discipline that when the fl planes are flying together, you know, that, that accuracy and what they said to me all three of them said independently was when I, I actually said to them what is it that upholds you and and I think that's a good question for all of us because the gremlins are trying to break us down so what is it that upholds you and each one said independently training it is training that upholds them and that means from training of course what we're talking about too is habits it's patterns of behavior so if you can try and create good healthy habits and move away from having to make a decision every time then that can really help kick those gremlins into touch so before now i've said to somebody why don't you have the elastic band on your wrist and every time you get that negative thought you know and and you know the gremlins for example some might even say i keep eating because the gremlins keep telling me is that kind of stuff so I don't mean to be flippant but if we stay that with that for a second the habit then is every time you get that oh why don't you and it won't do you any harm to have another five chocolate bars kind of stuff ping yourself and, and get something that that um, knee jerks you out of the old pattern behavior but when you do that decide what you're going to do when you ping the elastic band not as and when the gremlins come I'm going to ping the elastic band that's good enough but you also need to say and then I will and what does that fit like and there's a very good reason for it because when we stop doing something it always leaves a gap so if something we're solidly talking or acting or what have you it's it's obviously solid and consistent and when we stop something it's like doing a cut and taking a chuck out and if we're not careful we don't fill it with a chosen better habit or response then we will auto uh, go back to auto respond and go back to what we were doing before so when you stop and change something make sure that you factor in the revised habit that you want to um, create and also um, the other thing I wanted to just share is um, when I had dinner and and to me I saw humor in this at the Carlton Club I loved the um, after eight mints matching the uh, cups and saucers this made me laugh a very formal signpost to the cabinet room but ooh and the loo is just along there at the same time and also I then did manage to go up and see um, Lady Thatcher's lounge as it was I don't know if it's changed now the reason why I've popped these in is I love um, architecture and I really do appreciate um, things that just look very very nice I'm not so politically minded all I'm saying is because of things that I've been involved with on a voluntary basis it has enabled me to go into other areas and meet people and see things that I wouldn't have otherwise made met so it's what is your currency is your currency pure money if it is then everything that you do will be striving to go and get that money because that's where you have put the value and your um, 
benchmarking of progress, success, um, and um, you know, just contentment, I suppose. For me, my language, my currency is not money. My currency is actually more emotional and it's about love and acceptance and serving the greater good kind of stuff. And all I'm saying is, wherever your currency is, if you can serve and give in that area, then you will automatically be exposed to things that are very pleasing for you as well. Like I love the architecture and seeing new things. And um, that has come from a place of taking my mind off of myself, of looking outwards, of trying to serve where I can. That can stop the gremlins because the gremlins won't interfere if you're thinking about other people rather than yourself. And also there are rewards because in my experience anyway, I have been to places and I have met people that I wouldn't have otherwise have met. So where could you serve? Where could you step out and give a helping hand? And that also too, idle hands, you know, can really um, create problems for ourselves. So get yourself busy, sensibly busy, and where can you find a place to do that?